Greetings everyone and welcome to another WIST technology tutorial. In today's lesson I'm going to show you how you can create a gradebook in Google Sheets and give your students access to only their grades in Google Sites. Now, I know this sounds a bit like magic but it's actually fairly simple. Um, I'm gonna walk you through some of the steps that's necessary to to get this going but I find this as a very attractive option for keeping track of, of grades, um, especially um, if you're on the go a lot, it's very mobile friendly. If you're a PE teacher and you're in the field, you can you could update your uh, marking book even out with your phone um, using the, the Google Sheets app and so on and so forth. So the first thing I want to do is give you a tour of, of how this sheet is constructed and then I will show you how I get this information over to a Google site which is then um, shared with students who, when they click on the link, it only shows their grade. Um, and the magic in all this is that this particular gradebook is actually a, a private document. If we look at this right now, this is private information only accessible to me. But you'll see how this becomes available to my students. All right, so let's first take a look at a spreadsheet. Um, when I envision like the ultimate uh, sort of assessment tracker or grade book, um, it has to have a few elements. It has to be easy to use, it has to do automatic calculations, and it has to be accessible to my students. So the first thing I did was set up a roster of students uh, and an email address. These were, that's all I needed was a student name and an email address. Oh, and I also wanted my gradebook to have the ability to weight exams different to weigh exams differently uh, than than regular assignments. So I have student name, email address. Then these are calculations. Okay, this is simply a sum product evaluation. Um, you can read more about what sum product does in the Google Spreadsheet function list, but this is what it does. It calculates the sum of the products of corresponding entries in two equal sized arrays or ranges. In other words, it helps process the weighted grade. It'll calculate that average. So that's what I use to generate this, this, uh, this grade. And I did everything out of 100 just to make it easy percentage wise. And then it converts this number in this to a, it can be your A, B, C, D, F scale, or in our case, we have a, a seven point scale, which this actually is a VLOOKUP. And if you've seen any of my previous videos, I, I talk a lot about the benefits of VLOOKUP. This is another scenario where I'm taking this percentage and I'm looking it up in my grading scale, which I have here, and it's basically looking down this column and finding the closest match without going over uh, to the actual grade. So that's why this 90.91 is a 7 minus, because um, if we look at the grading scale, um, it doesn't quite reach, it doesn't reach 95. So anything up to like 94.99999 would still be um, a 7 minus. So there is some rounding I could play with to perhaps be a little bit more generous with points with students if I needed to be. Um, but anyway, that's how it is looking up the, the grade. Then I also was able to freeze the first four columns. This allows for if the grade book goes along, I can always see the name of the student easily when adding new assessments. So now getting the assessments in this nice kind of column alignment, um, this is a, an actual, this is a transpose function in Google Sheets. And what this does is it's going to take information from my assessments sheet, which is down here, and kind of change the orientation of it. So if we look at this, when I want to add an assessment, I simply place it here. I could write assignment eight, and there's 100 points possible. And this one maybe is weighted at just one. 
So with that transpose function, if I look back at my gradebook, I now have another entry right here, and I can proceed to score uh, my students here. So maybe there was an 88 there and a 92. And we can see how the grades have, have been automatically updated and changed. So these were some of the features that I was hoping to develop in this, this gradebook, um, linking the assessments and the grading scale. And then the next point was being able to get this information to my students and have it available on demand, yet students could only view their own grade. And this is where Awesome Tables comes into play. Um, awesome Tables is a it's a, a, a gadget for Google Sites, um, and there's some great documentation um, about how to set it up, and I'll take you into the setup of my uh, awesome table. But the really the interesting point in the documentation is here in 5.5, this idea of using row-level permissions through a Google Apps script proxy. I know that sounds complicated and probably Many of you are thinking there's no way I could possibly ever do this, but it's really not all that complicated. And the end result is that your students will only see the rows uh, that belong to them. Essentially, it's going to look at that email address and say, okay, I'm authenticating this table against this student, and I'm going to display this row of data. Um, I don't want to get in, there is a technical explanation, uh, which is located um, in a recent post here. It's posted on April 9th, uh, 2015. So if you're really geeky about how this is all working, um, which I kind of was, and I really liked digesting what this was saying, but basically what's happening, it's taking that private sheet and taking that information based on whoever's logged in and then reproducing that table of just that row of information where the grades are. So I know it sounds confusing, and it's easier if I just show you uh, what's happening. So if you page through the slideshow, um, you get to a one of the slides, and there is a script right here. If you click on this, gives you all this information and the good thing is you don't have to do anything with this all you want to do is you're just going to highlight it you copy it then in your spreadsheet you're going to go up to tools script editor you're going to paste it in here um, i've already done this and then after pasting it the first thing you want to do is you want to run it, all right? Because every time you run a script, you have to uh, grant an authorization to do that. So you just want to go ahead and run it. It's not going to do anything, but just run it so it works. And then you want to deploy it as a web app. When you deploy as a web app, it's going to give you a URL. And this URL will be pasted in the setup of your awesome table. And I'm going to show you exactly where that goes. And when you deploy this as a web app, you just want to be sure that um, anyone within your domain has access to the app, and you want to execute it as yourself. Um, this way, when people are running it, they don't have to authenticate or authorize the app every single time a new person does it. So this means it's already been authorized. I'm giving permission for this thing to run uh, on my account. So I've done all that. And... Now, I will show, take you into the awesome, the back end of the awesome table. So, rather than creating an awesome table from my actual gradebook, I preferred to actually just query elements of this gradebook in my awesome table gradebook. It's very boring, not very interesting, but all I wanted to do was prepare the information in a way that. Uh, is easily presentable through awesome tables. So the first thing you're going to notice is I just ran a query here on row A, I mean column 1, basically, um, because I wanted column 1 in my gradebook. 
because I want this column here, or this row, sorry, I wanted r this row to be the same um, right here. Then I skipped a row, right, because this, the second row here is vital for attributing filters to your awesome tables. If you want to make things sortable, you need to have this. Um, but in my case, there's no need to sort anything because only one student's grade is going to be showing up in each table depending on who is logged in, okay? And so the only filter that I added that allows for that to happen is this one called permissions, okay? Once I've installed that script and deployed it as a web app, I can then type in this word permissions in the column that contains the email addresses of my students, okay? So that's how that is kind of set up. So this is just my, my awesome table. So now let's hover over to the actual Google site, okay? Now my Google site is actually shared with anyone in my organization with the link, all right? Because even though the spreadsheet is private and I'm going to make it accessible to my students, my Google site needs to be accessible uh, to my students as well. So um, just I made it available to anyone with the link, but you're going to notice that even I as the teacher am not going to see the grades displayed here, right? Because it the, the way this proxy script is working is authenticating that column of data with whoever's logged in. However, if I go over to student one, and I open that same link. Notice here, this is student one, and all I'm seeing here is my grades as student one, okay? My grade as student one, and the same thing goes for student two. So all I'm seeing on this website is my grade for student two, and again, this is the exact same link. Nothing has changed. If you look at this URL and this URL, the only change is that the information that's populated in this table is based on whoever is logged in and accessing the site. So how does that happen? Well, if I go back to my teacher account, this is me, and I go to, I'm going to edit this page, and I'm going to show you the properties of this awesome table. Again, this is a gadget, uh, which you can get from the insert menu. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom, I'll just briefly jump over here to show you. You go to More Gadgets, scroll down, and you can install it right here. So here's the setup. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to paste the URL of your spreadsheet. Um, that's easy enough to do. You can go back to your gradebook and you can just copy that. It can be on any one of these pages. You can just copy that. So, actually, the way I've done it, it just actually picked my awesome table tab, and you want to copy that URL, and then you paste that into here. Then you want to also put the name of the sheet that contains this awesome table, which the name, of course, is just the name of the tab here at the bottom, and that should match awesome, awesome table. And let's go back here. And then this is the range. So this is basically the number of columns that should be displayed in that table, all right? So if it gets really long, you might want to go all the way down to like Z or T or S, and you can adjust this as you go. Um, not a problem. And because I guess I could allow my viewers to download the data, but I don't. there's really no need because it's available all the time on demand. So I didn't check that box there. And then, of course, you can decide how tall uh, you want it to be or to display on the screen. So if we go over to View, this is a, a simple one. We're just going to leave it as Table. I think Table is the default one. Um, and this number of items to display, well, there's only going to be one because it's per user. So each student's only going to see their own grade. 
And then in the format, um, this inside filter, just leave that as it is as well. Um, this is really more of an aesthetic sort of, if you're using filters, it adds some aesthetic value to how they're being used. Um, and then this, this whole app script proxy, this comes into play. Remember, this is the URL that we had created when we deployed that as a web app. This is where we need that. So if we're here, we're going to want to paste this proxy, which again is going to authenticate the user against that table and then recreate the table only with that user's row of data. And then once you've done that and you've hit save, um, your gadgets, it's, it's ready to go. So I can hit save. And again, it feels weird knowing that I'm the teacher and I don't have a viewing access to my gradebook on the Google site, but you don't really need it because you control the spreadsheet. So this is really where you're gonna go for any information about your gradebook because you are the owner and editor of it. So as the students though, um, they would click on a link in your LMS and when they would open it up, um, it would show right in here. So it does feel a little bit like magic, but it, it happens pretty quickly. So let's, let's just demonstrate, let's just change a couple grades here. So let's say student one totally bombed test one, okay, with a 45%. So notice here how the grade now, it dropped down to a six, and maybe this other exam over here, they were caught cheating and they got a zero, okay? So that's gonna lower the grade even more. Um, I don't know, I guess that seems pretty generous that it's only a five minus and they didn't even take that test. I might have to recalibrate the weight of these grades. But the point is you can see how this is dynamically changing the grades. And if I go ahead and refresh this Google site for student one, you'll notice that uh, they're going to have the most up-to-date information uh, regarding their grade. So actually that's student two, I'm sorry. Somehow I got logged in to student two. I guess I'm using a lot of these incognito windows. Um, student. one okay so now I'm logged I'm logged back in as student one I'm just going to copy that URL and paste it here There we go. So now the five minus is accurately reflected um, from here. So there you have it. So just to recap, um, this is an example of how you can combine using Google Sheets, uh, a Google Sites gadget called Awesome Tables, um, and a app script proxy to make your gradebook available to your students and only that student. So I hope you find this uh, use case interesting for awesome tables and, um, and good luck uh, building your own uh, marking books with Google Sheets. Thanks for watching.